Hello, everybody. Our next speaker is Martin Keplinger. Uh, he changed uh, the name of his talk, so it's uh, Deslip, the touchscreen access library is back. Please give him a warm welcome. Hello, everybody. So I will uh, talk a little bit of my, about my recent um, input system development in the TSLib library. I will get to what TSLib actually is in a minute. So I started working on this, uh, on this library because my employer wanted me to. He needs TSLib, it's important for us. And specifically I did multi-touch support. Um, and last year soon I became the maintainer of the project itself. And um, really quick, really fast, I did a release. 1.2 is the first release I did. And at my company, somebody came up to me and he was joking, you know, this is the second release of this thing in 10 years. There should be a huge release party you now. And um, of course, maybe that would be a little over the top for a tiny input library, but initially I had to call my talk the release puzzle. So I, quickly I want to add that my employer, obviously that Skinsinger Electronic Systems uh, is a member of the OCEL organization. We support free software that way. But of course, everything I do is on GitHub. And actually everything I think about this project is on GitHub. Um, the releases are actually the outline of my talk now. So I will tell you what TSLib is, how and why it is used today and has been used, and uh, what I did, what I added to the project, and what new use cases there might be for you nowadays. So TSLib is a C library. It simply enables or fixes touch input. And there are tools included to test, to quickly test and configure the library. What does it do? Very easy. It reads uh, input samples from your input uh, device driver. It applies filters to it, or yeah, in any way you want, and any number of filters. And it offers uh, the resulting filtered input um, stream of samples to users. Easy, right? The core of the library is very, very tiny and basically only manages plugins. Everything, every real work is done in a plugin or module. There are two kinds of module. Uh, there are hardware modules or raw modules as we call them, and filter plugins or modules. Let's get to an example. Oh, OK. Um, what we have here is a complete ts.conf configuration file. That's everything. That's a complete example. You would uh, use one raw module to access your you know, uh, input device driver. And uh, that's also the point here. This thing is really old. It, uh, it was basically written because device drivers didn't uh, have a standard like they have nowadays with the normal Linux um, input event system. So in this case, an eGalax something driver um, is used and needs a module to access this specific driver's samples. And you would apply, in this case, three filters to it. You know, what they actually do. Variance tries to filter out huge chumps in touch samples that shouldn't be there. Digiter, well, digiter, so when you don't move your pen or finger. Um, since especially on uh, resistive touch screens, the hardware would have, you know, jitter. And linear does real linear transformation of your x and y uh, positions. To quickly test the experience you created now, 
there is simply TS test, you run it and you uh, try it out. So use this thing, TS test for example, uh, implements uh, TS libs API, TS read. So um, there are also plugins for Qt or X or what have you that implement TS libs uh, API and they are also in use today. And the reason TS libs, uh, the reason this thing was uh, uh, in use and I want to add that it's, uh, it's used in many commercial products too. It was used in the um, Nokia internet tablets back in, I don't know, 2004 or when was that? Um, and it was there to enable touch in the first place. The hardware would really, when you think about resistive touch screens, they would drift and everything and you needed something to correct them. All right. So what did I do? What did I do? Uh, fortunately, the world changed. Drivers are, you know, standard Linux input uh, drivers. You just have the, the, the input events, keys, and codes. And I did multi-touch support. The one hardware plugin you use in TSLib uh, as soon as you have a normal input system uh, device driver is called input. And you basically only need this one these days. And I added multi-touch support for this module and for the filter modules. In this case, you add a median filter. When you remember this from, I don't know, statistics or math class, it's the median filter. Digita, again, debounce is about uh, pressure values. And there is a whole new multi-touch API now. And of course, the test programs for multi-touch. So, remember once again, it's a portable C library. It's very configurable. You only have to compile what you need, what modules you need. You can do this statically and dynamically. It should be stable. It's really old. It works really well. Um, but why would you use it today when you think about uh, capacitive touch screens who have fancy firmware in them? You can already configure really, really good. Um, well, you can still use TSLib to really optimize your user experience. And the point is you can do this at runtime. You can even think about changing uh, the, beha the behavior of your touch input experience. I don't know, think about depending on your physical environment or anything. And in our case, um, we manage different touch screens in our system and that's really easy by just managing one small configuration file. And what I really like is I wrote a little program you can run as a daemon that now is basically a user space input device driver and for TSLib. So it offers you a new standard uh, Linux input device you can use and you simply point your environment to it and you're done. You don't need to implement TSLib's API anymore. You might gain some performance improvements if you still do, but you don't really have to. We actually don't. So yesterday I ran uh, some statistics quickly um, so that you have a few names. Um, Russell King uh, actually wrote TSLib in, and his first uh, initial you know, in it, git initial commit uh, was in December of 2001. You might, uh, you might remember Russell King for porting Linux to ARM, also around that time, I think. And uh, basically, after his initial commit, Douglas Lauder took over. Chris Larson, I think now, uh, uh, does anybody know if Chris Larson is here at Foster? I was wondering, but I didn't see him. All right. Um, he was maintaining the project before me, before I took over. He did a really good job. Uh, the project is in a really good state. And uh, that's basically the overview of the SLIP. Uh, in case you have questions, go ahead now. 
uh, I can I could also tell you what is what things are open and still to do I could I don't know tell you about the available filter plugins you have but in case you have a question just shout I come along with the mic just uh, give me a hand if you have a question don't be shy Um, well, uh, they're all on GitHub, but um, oh, but uh, well, uh, yes, uh, there is still a minor issue with multi-touch uh, when you when you um, read the whole multi-touch definitions. There is a concept of uh, not only your touch contact, but also the tool, the position of the tool you are using, be it your finger or your pen. And we don't yet apply all our filters to the position of your tool in case you have a, real, uh, a hardware that really supports this kind of thing. That's one development issue. We need documentation. We need more documentation in the GitHub wiki. We, didn't, we don't have a wiki or, uh, yet. Um, you could imagine uh, doing more static analysis or even fuzzing or whatever. Um, but just have a look at the GitHub issues. <laughs> Anyone else? No, then thanks a lot for your talk, Martin.